Alzheimer's disease is a progressive, irreversible brain disorder that affects the brain, leading to cognitive decline and memory loss. Alzheimer's disease manifests in two primary forms, each with its distinct characteristics. Early onset Alzheimer's, 5-10% of all Alzheimer's cases. This form of Alzheimer's is diagnosed in individuals typically between their 40s and 50s, though it can occur even earlier. Late onset Alzheimer's or normal Alzheimer's, 90 to 95% of all Alzheimer's cases. This is the more common form, typically developing in individuals over the age of 65. In both forms, Alzheimer's disease is marked by the deterioration of brain cells, leading to a decline in memory, language, problem-solving abilities, and other cognitive functions. In the early stages of Alzheimer's disease, people may experience difficulty remembering recent events, misplacing things, and struggling with common tasks. As the disease progresses, symptoms worsen. But how does this happen? A healthy adult brain has billions of neurons, each characterized by extensive, branching extensions. These extensions facilitate the formation of connections between individual neurons, known as synapses. At these synapses, information is transmitted through minuscule bursts of chemicals, released by one neuron and received by another. This signaling mechanism constitutes the foundation of our memories, thoughts, sensations, emotions, movements, and skills. In the context of Alzheimer's disease, fragments of beta amyloid protein begin to accumulate abnormally into clumps between neurons, called beta amyloid plaques. Simultaneously, there is another protein, called TU, that in Alzheimer's disease starts forming twisted tangles, known as tau tangles, inside neurons. We can think of these amyloid plaques and tau tangles as obstacles that hinder communication between neurons. Because of these obstacles, the affected neurons struggle to function properly, and eventually, they die, leading to the characteristic symptoms of Alzheimer's. The exact reasons why beta amyloid plaques and tau tangles start to build up in the brain are not fully understood, but it is thought that the risk factors for late-onset Alzheimer's involve a combination of factors, including age. The risk of developing late-onset Alzheimer's disease increases with age. The prevalence of Alzheimer's disease is more than 10 times higher in people aged 85 and older than in people aged 65. However, older age alone is not sufficient to cause Alzheimer's. Genetic factors. Some genetic mutations increase the risk of developing the condition. These mutations can influence the production and clearance of beta amyloid protein and the behavior of TIU proteins. The most well-known genetic risk factor for late-onset Alzheimer's is the presence of the APOE gene. The APOE gene carries instructions for making a protein that transports cholesterol in the blood. Each person inherits one of three versions of the APOE gene, E2, E3, and E4. Having one copy of the E4 allele increases the risk of developing late-onset Alzheimer's disease by about three times. Those who inherit two copies of the allele are at even greater risk, an estimated 8 to 12-fold risk. However, it doesn't guarantee that you will get Alzheimer's. On the other hand, having the E2 version may lower your risk compared to having the E3 version. The E3 version is believed to have a neutral effect on the risk of Alzheimer's. A family history of Alzheimer's is not a prerequisite for an individual to be susceptible to the disease. However, having a parent or sibling, first degree relative, with Alzheimer's increases the risk of developing the disease independently of well-known genetic factors. There is no known cure for Alzheimer's disease, as the loss of brain cells is irreversible. However, there are therapeutic interventions that can improve the quality of life for patients and aid in managing dementia, including anti-dementia medications that aim to slow down the progression of the disease and also have effects on the neuropsychiatric symptoms of the condition. Cognitive rehabilitation, an approach especially in the early stages of the disease, through exercises aimed at training memory, attention, and other cognitive functions. Behavioral therapy, aimed to help manage behavioral problems such as agitation, aggression, and wandering. Physical exercise, aims to optimize physical fitness with an impact on the disease itself and the reduction of the risk of falls. Social interaction, 
Staying socially engaged can help reduce stress and improve cognitive function. And a healthy diet. A diet rich in fruits, vegetables, and whole grains can help support overall health and well-being. We hope this video was of great help and let us know if you have any questions.